In this uh, SGEMS tutorial, we'll be looking at uh, calculating and modeling uh, in, uh, diagram in 3D. So this is quite still a, a basic, but um, at least we'll cover something 3D. And uh, we're looking at um, cases where you know, often we have layered systems, uh, so that uh, makes the diagram modeling in 3D somewhat uh, more simplified. So here we are again in SGEMS, and uh, we'll be looking at this uh, data set. So it's a 3D uh, data set that's fully informed. Um, so in reality, of course, you would be calculating diagrams on point data sets, uh, but for easy interpretation uh, and given at least some introduction to interpretation, we'll be looking at uh, regular space data, which gives you a nice uh, diagram. So it's already important uh, to consider your data. Uh, and look at that and say that, okay, I see already some features, which is some anisotropy in this particular direction. I also notice a strongly layered system. Um, don't see any particular trend. Um, perhaps there's a nugget, seems to be a little speckly. So these are all kind of things to take into consideration. Another thing to take into consideration is to look at the histogram. So we look at the histogram of uh, this case is this porosity, as you notice. Uh, and so um, we need to look at the variance. Remember, the variance will be related to the cell, so it's good to remember uh, this number already. So as before, uh, we will be calculating the variogram. So I already put up that window and uh, input already some legs and directions. So here, uh, given that already some things that I observed uh, in my data set, uh, I calculate uh, six directions in the horizontal. So this would be zero, uh, three degrees, as you notice, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, uh, et cetera, minus 30, minus 60, which is equivalent to uh, 150 and 120. Um, notice that I don't calculate any dipping uh, directions simply because I don't expect anything uh, major new to happen in that dipping direction. So just the vertical diagram, which is at the bottom here, is already sufficient. Okay, uh, let's then calculate these variograms. Uh, okay, then we have uh, our variograms here. We notice some uh, beautiful variograms, it ranges, etc. So the I think the first thing to look at is to look at these old plots here. And so if we expand that a little bit, uh, don't forget to adjust your plot settings to zero. So we set that to 0 0.0, let's say 1.5, slight changes. And then we notice, okay, this looks uh, nice, uh, something we can start to interpret. So uh, let me pull this up in, in PowerPoint and start to look and analyze that a little bit more in detail. So here we are with the same plot. Um, and so now the question is, uh, how do we interpret all this information? So the thing here to do is, is, is not to go into SGEMS and start random modeling and sliding with, uh, with, uh, with the GUI and try to sort of figure out by random sliding what your variable would look like. I think it's important to what I call make a geometric mental image, uh, namely, if we're going to model this with geometric endosotropy, which obviously is the case here, simply because uh, I notice a change in range with direction and I don't notice anything major zonal anisotropy. So geometric anisotropy is important. And so for geometric anisotropy, we need to think about this ellipsoid and how we can capture all that information with an ellipsoid. So um, it's, it's good to start off and tagging off some, some really simple things, for example, uh, the first thing will be to look at the variance. Remember, our variance was 0 0.013. This is the variance of porosity, and this would be a good indicator uh, of SIL. So you may say, okay, that looks like there's a couple of variograms that uh, don't meet that SIL. That's true, uh, but I wouldn't overinterpret that. N remember that the variogram is also subject to sampling variance, um, and ergodicity, we call that in, in geostatistics, so that this, this, this is not a major difference in variance. If you had a uh, a sill that was over here for a certain variogram, then I would say, yes, clearly you have uh, zonal anisotropy. So what's what's important, I think, for this variogram uh, modeling is not to overmodel it uh, and know that uh, the other thing we should know is that what's really important for Krieging uh, and using other techniques is to look at the beginning here, the, the, 
what happens at the origin, the first few legs, these are really, uh, can be really make a big difference in terms of what your rigging or your stochastic simulation results can be. So that's an easy one. Uh, the second one would be the nugget effect. Uh, so let's look at that. Uh, so here we notice what I typically do is, is I, I look at these last, this, these first three uh, guys here, and I try to extrapolate that. Uh, and so if I extrapolate that, and I, I look always, usually do uh, a number of directions, uh, because for the nugget, we don't expect any anisotropy. So we end up, as you notice, uh, at 0 0.02. So the other consequence of this is that if you look at these last three ones, uh, you notice that this behavior at the origin is linear. It's not like we get this uh, effect of the Gaussian case or the effect of an exponential increase. And so we get sort of a more of a linear type behavior. Uh, this is important interpreting the nugget effect, of course, because if we have um, interpret this as a Gaussian, as a say, exponential variogram, then our nugget effect is going to be much lower. So that's uh, one interpretation. So this will be then modeled with a spherical model. Okay, uh, the next thing to look at, um, I find is, is to look at um, the direction for major continuity. And that turns out to be here, this one here, uh, that's say the 60 degree direction and I find there that the range is about 32. So do we worry again about uh, whether it's 32 or 32 and a half? Not at all. Um, that's really not going to be very important. And also later on in SGEMS, you'll see you can slide some uh, widgets and you can uh, adjust uh, this, this value uh, and do a slightly more accurate modeling. Since we have a, a, a vertical system, it's also good to look at the vertical variogram, which is this one here. Of course, this has the shortage range, and that's also what we expect. Uh, and so that range is around, let's say, six. Okay, so since we have that layered system, uh, the next one to look at in terms of your ellipsoid is the median uh, of the axis. Uh, remember in the lecture, I talked about the A, B, and C, A being maximum, B being median, and C being minimum. And so uh, it's logical to look at this variogram here, um, which is turns out to be directional indeed to uh, 60 degrees, which is 150 degrees. Uh, and there we find, say, a range of 16. So that's kind of it, uh, at least in terms of what we need for our interpretation. And so if we now go to SGEMS, which I'll do next, uh, then we can start inputting all that information. So again, you would go and do the exact same order as I did before, which is look at variance and nuggets. Uh, so the nugget effect is 0 0.02. So then uh, I have number of structures uh, that refers to nesting. And we talked about nesting uh, in, in the class and also in the other YouTube tutorial. Um, and that's uh, somewhat more complicated. There's no clear nesting here. Uh, if you would have nesting, you would see sort of kinks in this uh, variogram structures. You would see something increasing linearly and then, and then something increasing linearly in a completely different uh, gradient. So that's not what's happening here. So we say one structure. And now one structure has a contribution of variance minus nugget, which is in this case 0 0.011. Next thing was that linear behavior. Linear behavior here is uh, linear. So yeah, so that's spherical. Uh, so we put that in. Uh, then we have uh, basically the uh, direction of maximum uh, range, which is the 60 degrees horizontal direction. So I put here azimuth 60 degrees. Uh, there's no dipping or uh, anything else, so the outer angles uh, are zero because we have a, a sort of vertically anisotropic system, so these will remain zero. And then I just need to put in my, my maximum, my median, and my minimum range, and these are these values uh, in here. So that sort of uh, summarizes all the information that we have. If you have more structures, then you add to click one more and you get more variograms, and you probably can do some more uh, modeling in particular, for example, in the uh, in electron variogram modeling, I talk about zonal anisotropy and how that can be modeled by two structures of geometric anisotropy. So here we're back in uh, SGEMS, and uh, that panel on the right hand side is where you can input your, your variogram model and is exactly the same uh, as we left off in the PowerPoint presentation. So you notice that I've done already a pretty good job. So now in SGEMS, uh, the variogram model shows up and uh, we can evaluate what we did. And we've, we've done a pretty good job already. So um, what we, we're not looking for perfection here. So any, any small deviations are not going to be that important, particularly, let's say, 
when it comes down to uh, performing Krieging um, or sequential Gaussian simulation or the other stochastic simulation. So you can still uh, adjust a little bit. For example, uh, in the vertical, I may start sliding uh, with that and I get this uh, sliding thing. Notice that when, I, when I'm in the vertical, then any of the other directions, uh, which are all horizontal, are not changing. So no matter what I do here, that wouldn't affect uh, this variogram. So we can uh, slide that. Let's say we put in around five, and we're happy with that. Uh, we see that we get a nice, reasonably nice fit. Uh, so this is the major direction of continuity, which is 60 degree direction. And so again, if I'm uh, going to change that, you notice now what happens is that I can't just adjust this plot and say, oh, I'm going to find the best fit here. Uh, this would be a really great fit. Uh, again, you say, well, it's not quite fitting over here. Uh, that's true, um, but what's really important again is, is is what happens over here. But you also notice that if I slide this max here, then we see movement in all of the other horizontal directions. So remember that we are modeling here a two uh, a three dimensional variogram and not just one dimensional variograms. And so uh, if you change um, ranges or angles, uh, that will have an effect on many directions. And so we have to keep that uh, in mind. So this looks pretty good. Uh, and then I can also slide a little bit my medium. So maybe I want to increase that a little bit. And I think, yeah, I would be, I would be pretty happy with this kind of aerogram model. Um, it, it, it reflects most of what um, we think there is, uh, which is some kind of a major direction in the horizontal. Fitting, as I remember, fitting everything um, well in the, at the origin is more important than things that are further away simply because often this is controlled by data. Uh, while well, here, this is going to matter for our interpolation. So the, I see that everywhere. Um, again, I see a little deviation here. Uh, that's because of that that zonal uh, looked like a zonal anisotropy, but it isn't really a zonal anisotropy. It's just a, a small a small change. So again, don't worry about this part. Worry more uh, about this part and the nugget and the type. So in SGEMS, uh, you can then also uh, save your variable model. Uh, and then use that, for example, for 